Um, okay. So this is section two three, product <coughs> and quotient rules, and we're going to start with product rule. And I'm going to start very quickly by asking you guys to do the following quick, quick example. Okay. So suppose f of x is x squared and g of x is x cubed. And suppose h of x equals f times g. Everyone take 10 seconds and see if you can figure out what h prime would be. h prime? Mm -hmm. She gave me that look that it's not right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she was like, oh, that's, you're stupid. Don't even to find the Oh, maybe we should. So 2x and then 3x to the 2. And then, oh, but then you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, does anyone have an answer? How many people say 6x cubed? Uh, say that, guys. Okay, Camille yeah, says it proud. He's got his hand way up in the air. Oh, good. We've got a bunch more. All right. How many people say 5x to the fourth? All right. Let's see. Well, let's see. To get 6x cubed, you did the derivative of the first times the derivative of the second. Okay. Are we sure that that's the answer? No. No, we're not really sure, right? But here's what we do know. We do know that h of x is x squared times x cubed. So h of x has to equal x to the fifth, right? right. And of course we know the derivative of x to the fifth is right, so 5x to the fourth. But then you gave us that look, so. I was trying to throw you off. Okay, I want you to be sure. So sure by your answer it can withstand a look, right? But your looks are really powerful. They're scary. <laughs> So anyway, uh, here's the thing that this should teach you. The derivative <laughs> of the product is not the product of the derivatives. You can't just take the derivative of one function times the derivative of another, multiply them together, and get the derivative of the whole thing. So this is why we have what's called the product rule. So product rule. Okay, let's use this one. Product rule says the derivative of f times g equals f prime times g plus f times g prime. So you do the derivative of the first function times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. f prime g plus f g prime. Kind of rolls. Everybody say it with me. F prime G plus F G prime. Everybody. Prime G F plus F G prime. Okay. Let's try it again. F prime G plus F G prime. Everybody. F prime G plus F G prime. Everybody. F prime G plus F G prime. All right. That's, that's the product rule. F prime G plus F G prime. Do you practice that from the marriage? Yes. Every night. Okay, from this moment forward, if a problem <laughs> requires product rule and you don't use product rule, how much credit do you think you're going to lose Zero. on that problem? Oh, the entire it. full credit of the problem. I'm warning you now, every year I put at least one free response problem on the final exam that's worth at least 15 points and requires product rule. Okay? You don't want to lose that many points for product rule. So every time you don't use product rule and you're supposed to, I'm going to put PR or quotient rule, I'll put QR. Or chain rule next week, I'll put CR. Okay? So when you don't use the rules, and by the way, where does it say this? Syllabus. On your syllabus, right? Okay, so when you don't use the rules and you're supposed to, uh, then you, uh, 
you're going to lose full credit. Now, product rule, we can't really force you to do it right now because the problems that require product rule that you would be able to do at this point, you could just foil out and do them without product rule. So it's hard right now for us to enforce product rule, but after next week, we'll be able to enforce it. Because next week, we can do something like that, right? Yeah. So next week, we can enforce it. And then, of course, next month, we can do something like that, right? That isn't that hard. Yeah. So anyway, or x sine x, or any of those things where you can't just multiply them out first. This one you could, but we're not going to. So we're going to just practice product rule. When you do the derivative of this, f prime g plus f g prime, the functions aren't going to say this is f and this is g. It's just going to be anything times something else. Something with x's times something else with x's. All right. If y equals 5x squared, this is not a product rule problem. This is a coefficient. It's not like f and g. You could do product rule. It's just that you get 0 times that plus that times that, right? And so it would work. But there's certainly no reason to do product rule when it's just a coefficient. It's x's times x's. That's when you have product rule. So think of like this first term as your f and this second term as your g. All right? So first we have to do f prime, the derivative of this guy. What's the derivative of this first guy? 3 minus 4 times x, so 4 x. Good. Okay. Derivative of the first times the second. F prime g plus f g prime. What's g prime? 0 plus 4 4. Okay? And then, of course, you would have to simplify. I'm not going to write now because we're short on time. All right, but you would have to simplify. Okay. All right. Now, one quick note on product rule. If you have more than two functions, say you have three or four or five functions, you can still do product rule. So say I had one of the derivative of f times g times h. Just kind of stick with me for a second and watch, and then you'll, I think you'll get the gist of how this works for you more. You do f prime times g times h plus f times g prime times h plus f times g times h prime. I don't see the pattern. I see. Okay? <laughs> if there were four, it'd be the derivative of the first times all the rest plus the derivative of the next times all the rest, plus the derivative of the next times all the rest, right? So you just always do the derivative of one times all the rest, and so forth. Okay. Where there's a product rule, well, you know there's a quotient rule. Quotient rule. <laughs> Yay. quotient rule we can enforce. So you're probably going to see more quotient rules than product rules on your quiz. On a quiz? On Friday. On Friday. Who's on Friday? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that in there? The derivative of f over g. Well, can you combine the two and be like f times g on the bottom over f? What? You see what I'm saying? Uh, I'm not sure. You could have like f g h. Like yeah, you can have products and quotients. Absolutely, and you will, but not right now. Okay, quotient rule. F prime g and f g prime should look very similar to product rule. Minus. So, product rule is f prime g plus f g prime. Quotient rule is f prime g minus f g prime all over g squared. I thought, I thought it was done. Okay? Now, this is a cute trick. I don't use it, but I teach it just in case you want to know. If you call the top function high and the bottom function ho, you get Let's go. ho d high minus high d ho over ho ho. So if you can remember ho d high minus high d ho over ho ho, right? 
It's a little memory trick. It's, it's, I don't use it, but you can. It's like, yeah, it's really it's like a D. Those are the hardest thing to memorize. But if something means the derivative, right? So you have ho d high minus high d ho over ho. Can we just memorize the actual formula that's on You just memorize. I do f prime g minus f g prime. Yeah, this one's a lot easier. That's fine. OK, quick example. I thought you were going to try to make a joke or something like that. No, no, no. Okay, 3x minus 2x squared over 5 plus 4x. So say we have to find y prime. All right, always start with the derivative of the top. Here you start with the derivative of the first term. Here you start with the derivative of the first term. Okay, so what's the derivative of the top? 3 minus, minus 4x. Four four Good. Times the bottom minus the top. Times what's the derivative of the bottom? All over the bottom squared. Can I cancel these five plus four x's? Can I cancel these? No, that would be a great big ba, right? Okay. Of course, you would still need to simplify by multiplying all out the top and combining like terms. All right. Quick note on notation, there's still two other things we have to learn. We've got time. There's always time. Got lots of time. Okay, notation. All right. If we, you guys know that y prime is the same thing as dy dx, right? Duh. Duh. Okay. All right, now you know. You know what? I'm backing up. I'm going to teach you something else first. <laughs> backing up. Uh, this is about to write high DO. And I was like, oh, no. Higher order derivative. We're going to do an example first, and then I'm going to teach you this notation. Because otherwise, I don't think you'll understand it. Okay. 2x to the fifth plus x to the fourth. Minus 3x cubed minus 8x squared plus 10x minus 12. Our question that I'm going to give you is find y prime 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 prime. Now, this is called the fourth derivative of y. All right? The fourth derivative of y. These are called higher order derivatives. When y is a polynomial, people love doing higher order derivatives. Once it becomes a radical, they get messy. But here we go. In order to find y quadruple prime, you first have to find y prime. So tell me what y prime is. 10x, 10x4 plus 4x3 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 cubed. 9x squared. 9x squared. 16x. 16x. Plus 10. Um, Everyone okay with y prime? I know we're moving fast. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Y double prime is the derivative of y prime. Oh, that's okay. nice. Okay. Okay. But that's going to be the derivative. All right. So what's the derivative of y prime? 40x cubed. 40x cubed. 12x squared. 12x squared. 18x. 18x. 16. Minus 16. Oh, that's nice. Everyone take a second and find y triple prime and y quadruple prime. That's nice. Does that make sense? Yeah. You just found y quadruple prime. Now here's the notation that I need to give you because your book is going to use a slightly different notation when they ask it for these higher order derivatives. Our book says weird stuff. But your book says weird stuff? No, it's, it's well, fine. Why would anybody it's ever need a higher order derivative? Well, let me ask you this. If this was position and I asked you for acceleration, that would be the second derivative of position. Well, then, uh, acceleration just did. What's after acceleration? Ooh, what, anyone remember what the derivative of acceleration is? Yeah. 
Position. It's called the jerk. What's the derivative of the jerk? You know what? I don't know. You so got me no there. Okay. Because the only use of derivatives is position, velocity, acceleration, right? Yeah. Okay. Y prime is dy dx, right? Right. Y double prime is written in this notation as d squared y dx squared. So if you see d squared y dx squared, that means y double prime. If I had y triple prime, that would be d cubed y over dx cubed. And so Okay. Wait, were you being sarcastic? Can you use derivatives for other things? Yes, yes, we can. Yes. Yeah, All right, guys, have a great day. And tomorrow.